Summertime, we went to a bunch of fairs, too. It's amazing how your perspective on fairs changes. Because as a kid, you're like, the fair, there's a fair. As an adult, you're like, that looks dangerous. <laughs> Are they cooking in that truck? <laughs> we used to go to the fair to see the biggest pig in the county. Now we go to the fair to be the biggest pig in the county. <laughs> Some of that food at fairs, it's ridiculous. Deep fried Oreos, okay. Deep fried Twinkies, maybe. Deep fried butter, no. You know how occasionally you'll eat a stick of butter? What if we deep fried it? No. It's wrong. I mean, it's delicious. But it's wrong. There's no health inspector at the fair. That's why they can do that. Because everything at the fair is very temporary. Meaning when the cops come, they can leave. And some of those rides don't look safe. I'll just, I'll just let my kids go first. No sense in us all dying. <laughs> but you never want to be judgmental at the fair. You're always like, you know what, I'm sure this ride's fine. You know, I'm sure. I'm sure the guy running the ride, he's probably a structural engineer. <laughs> we don't know, that's probably how he lost his arm. You know? Because <laughs> inherently, we're trusting. We're very trusting of elevators. We're like, what is this, a casket on a string? Let's hop on. <laughs> I don't know how it works, but if it shakes, we'll giggle. <laughs> we giggle because we realize no one's driving the elevator. We're like, <laughs> we're all gonna die. <laughs> Should we press one of these buttons or climb through the trap door in the ceiling that leads to every Bruce Willis movie? What do we do? <laughs> we also giggle because there's no talking on an elevator, right? You get on an empty elevator, you and a friend, and you're like, I'll tell you later. It's like a den of awkwardness. You just stand there like, are we supposed to kiss? What are we doing? <laughs> it's very strange. Not as awkward as a stairwell. You ever been in an abandoned stairwell by yourself? You encounter strangers coming the other way. There's always that moment where you meet eyes where you're like, uh, if you don't rape me, I won't rape you. <laughs> what are you doing in this? What am I doing in this? Are we in an episode of Law and Order? But we volunteer for these awkward situations. Sometimes we pay to participate. Like water parks, those are fun, but there's always that moment where you're like, is this a meeting of people I don't want to see in swimsuits? Because <laughs> there are people walking around water parks with a confidence that they shouldn't have. <laughs> and you almost admire it. You're like, you go away from me. You try and figure it out. You're like, is it the fumes from the toxic chemicals combined with the children's urine? What gives you that swagger that would make Beyonce blush? But you don't want to be judgmental. You're like, you know what? They're there for their kids. I'm here for my kids. And compared to them, I look like Magic Mike. So God bless them. My three-year-old didn't get me a birthday present this year. Yeah, and I've known him for a couple of years. <laughs> so I'm not talking to him. <laughs> Presents are interesting. I don't really need or want anything. I mean, my life is pretty chaotic. I have five kids, you know, and I have friends that love stuff. I have a friend who has a drawer of watches. I have another friend who has five cars. Whenever I'm with these people, I realize I'm just simple. All I need is a nice bed and a private jet, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Now I have the bed, all I need is the jet. And it could be a used jet, I'm not a snob, you know? I mean, I don't want a prop plane, I'm not trash. <laughs> Just a regular old private jet to take a regular old guy to a regular old private island away from his kids. <laughs> yeah, I'm just salt of the earth, I'm an every... <laughs> That's ridiculous. This year has flown by. I don't want to brag, but I've kept my New Year's resolution. I've done it. I've had pasta every day this year. <laughs> Thank you. I, I tell you, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. There were some nights when I was like, oh my gosh, it's 11.30. I haven't eaten pasta. I have to wake my wife up and have her make me some. Yeah. But I do it because it's about personal accountability. By the way, if you believe I would wake my wife up, you're drunk, all right? Because I'm afraid of her, all right? 
But I like being married to a strong woman. I do it. I'm sure there are other men in the audience looking at their wives like, honey, do you want me to clap? Or, you know, do you like what he's saying? Because I'm on your side. I just don't want to talk about it later on. I do like being married to a strong, decisive woman. But you know what? I'm in charge of the remote control. That's where I draw the line, all right? I'm in charge of the remote because I'm the man, all right? I mean, she picks all the shows we watch, but I get to hold the remote. Because that's the kind of puppet dictator that I am. Being in charge of the remote control is a no-win situation anyway. The person you're watching with is never satisfied. They're like, turn it up, I can't hear it. And then you turn it up and the commercial comes on. Turn it down, what's wrong with your hearing? I'm always in trouble when we watch television. Stop crinkling that back. Once I got in trouble for sneezing. Why would you do that? I think it's involuntary. Well, now I didn't hear what that guy said. All right, I'll rewind it. Oh, now it's starting the whole episode over. Here, you should be in charge of the remote. I'm gonna go back to hiding in the bathroom. Cause I'm a man! I do love her, she can be demanding. Like, unrealistic demands. Like, she wants me to lose weight. I have no expectation of losing weight. Some of it is, I used to have all these jokes on donuts, and now sometimes when I do shows out of town, people will give me boxes of donuts. Which makes me think, I gotta start doing jokes about private jets. <laughs> but I'll do a show and someone will give me a box of donuts, or I'll get to my hotel room, and in my hotel room there'll be a box of donuts. And I always look at the donuts like, I'm not, not gonna eat those. <laughs> I mean, those were a gift. What would Jesus do? <laughs> He'd eat the donuts. But it's always a box, a dozen, a dozen donuts. I'm by myself, I'm typically in a city for one night. What kind of monster pig do I come across as? How many donuts should we get again for again? Enough for a Baptist church. Whatever would feed an entire Little League team, that'll cover that tub of turds for a couple hours. I don't know what to do with all the donuts. You know, I'll eat two. All right, I'll eat four. But I don't know what to do with the rest of them, you know. What do I, put them in my rolly luggage? I did that once. I'm not proud of it. We've all done things we're not proud of. You're like, this is kind of pathetic, but here goes. Zip, zip, zip. Off to the airport we go. Of course, that was the time I got the random search at the airport. I made it through the metal detector. This nice TSA guy was like, sorry, sir, random search of your bag. And I was like, <laughs> what I wanted to say is I have drugs in my butt. Because a cavity search at that moment seemed less humiliating than revealing the true contents of my luggage. <laughs> But I had to do it, so the TSA guy unzipped the bag. And it was one of those flat boxes of donuts, you know, like Krispy Kreme, so it took up the entire rolly bag. <laughs> it looked like I was smuggling donuts. And the TSA guy just looked at me like, wow. <laughs> They saw those here. There's a Dunkin' Donuts two gates away. There was such compassion in his eyes. You got a problem. And I couldn't say anything. I couldn't be like, those are mine. Yeah, some guy gave them to me. Some guy named Al, Al-Qaeda, he gave them to me. I'd act all casual. I'd be like, yeah, those are my donuts. I travel with donuts. I'm trying to get diabetes. Why don't you leave me alone? And since it was a random search, the actual box of donuts had to be open. And because I was wheeling through the airport, all the donuts were crammed and smushed to one end. It looked like I had rummaged through a dumpster outside of a donut shop. Well, this one's still good. <laughs> Just get these rocks and sticks out of here. Hi, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you want. If you want to see more stand-up, I have more stand-up. Or if you want to see an original show like Let's Get Cooking or The Mike and Pat Show, 
that's available on my channel, but also just know that I'll be posting a new video every day during this pandemic or until the world ends. Please hit subscribe and turn on your alert or notification button.